It's great to be back on set in our own little big space <laughs> uh, and thank you so much for taking our time to watch the very first episode mm -hmm. where we talked about love, snoring and, and other, other things. things. We hope that it did make a lot of sense to you, uh, giving you some perspective and possibly some insights and suggestions on how to make your relationship paradise on earth. Yeah, and if you haven't watched it, then you really do need to check it out. Most Good definitely. Stuff. Yeah. Now, if you know anybody who loves love, or is in love, or thinks he or she is in love, or is looking for love, or hoping the love <laughs> will find them, do tell them about the series of videos and they will thank you so much for it. As we look back over the last one year, we appreciate the fact that relationships are vital to the success of even our relationship. And uh, when we look at the wedding itself, the build up to the wedding, we want to say a big thank you to all of our friends and families who have been there for us. And We're really, really grateful. It's very encouraging and supporting to know that there are people out there who look out for you, look for all the best in you and are always there to encourage you. Yeah, so to all our online partners, our friends online and offline, our prayer partners, associates, counselors, pastors, leaders, parents on parents, both sides, most definitely mm -hmm. on both sides, our siblings on both sides as well, our cousins and our little nephews and nieces, thank you so much. And for you watching, I want to say a big thank you to you. Thank you. as we examine issues <laughs> okay apologies drama <laughs> drama tissues i'll talk more about that yeah and happier days happier days and basically the key concept is that when you're in a relationship there are things that come up and things that happen that you've not been able to anticipate or things that are unprecedented in your world but when you have a partner, you have to learn how to pay attention to the things that matter to them and also trust and believe that they have the same presence of mind and patience to pay attention to the things that are... They should. Yeah. Yeah, so pretty much it... Pertinent to you. It's, so it's been one year and while marriage has been bliss, there are some spots in between where I literally have to pull out the tissue and clean the boohoos here and there. So it's been issues generally would arise and then the tissues yeah um, but at the end of the day we're able to talk it through and work it out and then have happier days yeah nobody has ever slept in the hospital and the clinic <laughs> nobody has been negatively impacted and by the way men also cry now when we're back after this very brief break, he hasn't cried yet though, so i'm <laughs> waiting on that <laughs> oh, yeah, i've cried in a place of prayer and i've cried telling you how much i love you okay well okay <laughs> I think to correct that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when we're back after this brief video, we're gonna dive into the heart of the matter and so look at certain distinctions between Pastor Dabby and Sister Pastor Pastor <laughs> Pastor's wife Tuju. Yeah. And also give you some case studies as to what we've been able to walk through and talk through. So this is gonna be of tremendous impact to you. Real life people. Real, Real life. life. Not Nollywood, not Hollywood. True story. We'll be back in a GV.
we are back and happy to be. LL, what are we talking about today? Okay, so now this is where it gets even more juicy. So we're talking um, by default about conflicts and resolving conflicts. And so we're going to take it from the aspect of men and women being very different and then my husband and I ourselves being very different. Still a couple of days ago, I was asking you, remember, mm -hmm. why did we get married again? What did we have, <laughs> have in common? common? Yeah, because we're so different sometimes and I mean the fundamentals are intact. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to tell me something about friction. Oh yeah, that? friction is extremely important. Now, I know that most people out there are like, no, I never want to have any fights with my spouse. Mm -hmm. We are the same all the time. And that might not be the best of things because the friction, the issues that cause friction in your life are also the opportunities for growth, True. for progress, for increase, for appreciating the other person's mindset, style of thinking, of communicating. And please think about it, but there is really no motion without friction. True. If there is no friction between your tire, your car tire and the road, then you can move, you slide, you glide into an accident or into damnation. That's a heavy word. <laughs> but you need friction between your feet and the floor, between the tire and the road. In a similar fashion, mm -hmm. friction between a man and a woman is pretty healthy. Now, the key thing is how do you work around them? You know what the Bible says that iron sharpens iron. iron. And what happens when iron is sharpening iron? Sparks. Sparks! <laughs> sparks are flying and what's really happening when the sparks are flying is that the part of this iron is being worn out by that other iron mm -hmm. but ultimately both pieces of iron are becoming sharper and it's funny that you we're not even certain what iron starts the sharpening or what <laughs> iron was blunter but at the end of the day thing is both of them end up being sharp both of them benefit so still boils down to our differences and if you will my favorite conflict <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that you should have a favorite conflict like not favorite conflict but maybe the one that has really I don't know kept coming has been quite recurrent or no has uh, like there has been like what just what just happened okay so we've had stuff what I would call clutter <laughs> <laughs> in the house and we had them for about five months you know how somehow you just collect things here and there things you bought yeah. you ended up not using or things have just been in the house for ages and they've probably expired and things they're just like groceries and sometimes books and, and things in this week yeah i like to collect information, for no apparent information reason to pieces, me information products and ancillary products. Mm, yeah and other things <laughs> And so they're just there and for me i'm very organized and i try to be organized i'm not saying you're not but i have a higher level of okay let's put it this way i have more inspiration than organization she has a lot more organization than i have organization basically what? i have like different ideas popping up at different times so i open many tabs i open many books i open many things together she aligns and structures those things for me. She's very I think you just confused everybody. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so they're all these things. And I'm, one day I'm just like, you know what? I need to clear this place out. And so I think something had even happened with us at that time. So I wasn't even in the mood for Best him anyway. And so I put all these things aside and I put them in paper bags with every intention of telling him, look, I put these things aside and I want us to do something about them. Meanwhile, about two weeks ago, we had a, we had had a conversation about these things that we're going to give them away. Two weeks prior. Yeah. yeah. So I, we had said we're going to give these things away. So me, I had put these things away thinking that, oh, we had already had this discussion. So, yes. And I, I was like, oh, you want them out of this house? My stance was like, I want them in this house. I am the head. <laughs> well, I didn't say that, but that was possibly like the subliminal driving force or philosophy that made me go like, I want them in this house. Yeah. And so I came out and like, we already had a discussion about this. Why is it a problem? And I felt he had already assumed that I wasn't going to tell him about it. And I thought that wasn't fair. And so submissive wife that I am, and let me do a side step here. My husband actually doesn't do the whole 
I'm the head of the home. This is what I say that happens. He doesn't do that. He actually doesn't need to do that because I trust his decisions. I trust he's wise enough. So it's easy to follow. It's easy to obey and it's easy to just comply. And he actually does listen. So he doesn't really do that. Anywho, um, so I generally quietly <laughs> pack all the things, the clutter back to the room I had arranged. Yes. And I leave them there for another three weeks. After which, I see him packing them into bags. Well, then I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what's happening here? And he goes, okay, baby, so who are we going to give these things to? I'm like, bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah. obviously, because you wonder what the home change was. I felt like we had a conversation earlier. We had begun a mutually beneficial process mm -hmm. of dispensing our mutually owned resources and I felt that process was aborted midstream. I felt like we're not sticking through to it. And I also felt maybe slightly slighted that I was not brought into the note. Now, the issue for me was not so much you want to give something out, but the tone of. I just want to mount this house. I'm not in my dad in this house. I'm not out in this house. I'm not a cool one. I'm cool one. She does not like that. I'm <laughs> just being theatrical. So, how did we resolve that? I thought about it and I was like, you know what? I actually need to give this out. Your wife is right. Mm -hmm. I need to give it out. So, and I think it's the middle of the night, I was praying one day and I just said, okay, you know what? Let's put things together. And then that's, that's how. Yeah, and for me, what I resolved in my mind was just to submit, really. If he says, no, you can't give them away, there was no need to fight. He said no, he said no. And I'd given my reasons. But if he didn't see them as good enough, at that point in time, I was just going to leave it. I just hope that at some point he would change his mind or see reason. And that's what eventually happened. So I submitted and gave it time. He reasoned it out and saw that, okay, he could actually be wrong. And there's nothing in being wrong yeah. as a man and apologizing and moving on. Yeah. yeah, so that's how we got through that. That's how we got through that. Now, it might look like a minor issue, but many have gone to war about such <laughs> yeah. and many have had their homes broken because of those tiny cracks let's look for another example another example of conflict um i think it will still touch on us being a bit different i'm not as expressive as my husband is as i'm sure you've noticed <laughs> in these videos my husband is very animated, he's very up and going, he's easily tickled, he's easily humored, easily impressed. I'm not easily impressed, but certain things that get my attention really get his attention. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But touch on the other hand, I'm like, oh wow, funny video. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, good news. True. It's because sometimes I'm laughing, laughing, I'm like, why are you not laughing? Why are you? Isn't it funny? And so I have to laugh on her behalf, <laughs> like to make up for the laughter quotient required for that particular event. Yeah, so to me things might be funny, but like yeah, moving on. So and the reverse is the issue, the opposite is the case rather, when I'm being sarcastic or when yeah. I'm joking in a sarcastic way. So when I'm being sarcastic, I'm not laughing about it or smiling about it, I just give it to you straight. And then he goes, that wasn't nice. That was a bit rude. You shouldn't have said that. I'm like, <laughs> but I was just joking. Can't you take a joke? I would say I felt like mm -hmm. that was quite impolite. <laughs> yeah, I was like, if when you're joking, you laugh to you. Yeah, you don't say like, like break that. Break a smile or a sneak or something. My wife goes like, um, I, I can't. <laughs> the next thing that comes to mind now, but it's straight. And I'm like, oh, really? What's going on? And so I think that's also a point of difference because like I can tease people mm -hmm. when I do it I laugh and I go like oh I was just joking or, I'm sorry I I'm hope sorry. you know I meant yeah. this and yeah. not that but but my wife doesn't roll like that she yeah, I just <laughs> poke and I move on she and, and, she moves on. and because I, I'm not used to that style of humor <laughs> um a little like okay what's going on but I've learned now to listen maybe for a few more seconds before reacting or choosing my emotions. Yeah, and I, I need to learn that my way of communication might be offensive, even though I know that's not what I mean. Intend, yeah. Yeah, so some people might get it, some people might not. I don't know who will and who will not, so I need to... Turn it down. Yeah, especially with my husband, because I don't want to offend him or upset, oh, or upset thank him. Thank you. <laughs> thank yep. you. Yeah, I think another issue we've had um, is 
typically like when we go out many times when we go out i run into more people who know me or who have met me or who i've interacted with or who I'm, i've just made friends with and then we go on this very long conversations where we're just talking about different things and i'm talking with this person that i just met five minutes ago but it feels like we've known for five years mm -hmm. and my wife my very lovely adorable and patient wife to the toasting now <laughs> She just waits for me. She's like, and I, I know she doesn't enjoy it all the time, but I feel like when I'm with people, I want to give them the best of myself and just like exchange and talk. And she's there, she's waiting, sometimes counseling people after service for God knows how many hours. And we're just there, and she's there. And I think every now and again, at different times, we've had to go to some other place where I was not ready and she was not ready. Yes. And he's like, babe, let's go. The cab is waiting. Or babe, let's go. I have to be somewhere else at two. And I'm like, I have to wait for you virtually all the time. Yeah, and then these few times, you have to wait for me. And I think once or twice, I've even done it intentionally. That, like, <laughs> you two wait for me. And then he's all snappy and we have to go now. Yeah, I'm now, done. So you need to be done Now, too. the heating code is, this is London. And in London, you call a cab and you can drive. And, and we drive sometimes. Or you drive into certain places, you get all kinds of charges. So when we have to call the cab and we don't leave when the cab is around, then we have to pay extra charges. And as a man who's vocationally driven and thinking about facts and figures and pounds and dollars, I'm like, every minute excuse the clock me is ticking. Hello, babe. <laughs> Hello, babe. <laughs> when you are when you are doing your own meetings there are times the cab has been waiting as well oh. but she will give one reason or the other why it's okay the first five minutes is free <laughs> or the first my five minutes they won't charge for that or something or oh, this is very important if it wasn't important i wouldn't be doing it what's a few yeah. extra pounds you yes yeah, so the so there was a day i didn't know it had gotten to her and there was a day she just i can't remember what happened maybe you snapped or yes. you came up and I went like, ah, what's, what's happening? What's wrong? <laughs> because sometimes like when she's a little upset or ticked off, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so she explained to me, which I think is very critical in keen relationships. She explained to me mm -hmm. that the issue was really that, see, I wait for you like eight out of 10 times and on the on occasion where you have to wait for me, yes. don't demonstrate the same kind of understanding, patience, and also I felt quite remorseful and I did apologize and said to her, um, I'll, I'll watch out watch for out that. For that. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you, you have watched the first video, you haven't watched the first video, <laughs> you wouldn't get this, wouldn't so you should it. watch the first video. Yeah, watch the first video. So I think through it all, we've been able to resolve it along three lines for me. I think that one of them is being a lot more patient and making the necessary concessions mm -hmm. to understand how the other person functions. So yes. for me, it's all about being able to identify with how she feels about something and then seeking the right occasion to explain my perspective on it mm -hmm. or to meet up where she is mm -hmm. whilst we're growing together. And this comes through a lot of talking and asking questions. So is this how you feel? Do you feel like this because of what do you think I should have done? Yeah. What would you prefer next time? Why do you feel like this? You know, you really need to ask. Yeah, and initially, questions. my wife was not very used to expressing the reasons for our displeasure or our not being cool with something I did. And for me, I didn't, I didn't really appreciate it because I'm the kind of person that if something is wrong, I drill mm -hmm. it down to the reason something is wrong. I address mm -hmm. it immediately, and. It's Do done so, and so over it's way. way that I move on. But having to work with her and being patient to understand where she is has also been an opportunity for me to grow character-wise mm -hmm. and to be a better person. And I think that's a very key lesson for men to learn because if women are anything like me, sometimes we're feeling so many things at the same time. We're True. excited and angry and tearful and not tearful all at the same time. And a lot of times it's difficult to articulate how we really feel in the logical way that they would understand it so we know how we feel but we can't really express it and then the man thinks we're stupid or we're not him the <laughs> man may think we're stupid or we're dumb or we don't have a point in the first place that's why we can't articulate what we are saying but i think if the man would really just take time out to listen and ask these questions in a sensitive and patient way she will make sense you didn't marry so a dumb person a lady 
dealing with your man who needs to hear this, find a secret way of sending them this video. <laughs> yeah? And make it appear on your Facebook page or something like that. Or send yeah. them my mail. I think the last thing will also be prayer. Of course, prayer is a key ingredient in resolving mm -hmm. conflicts. If you can understand the other person's perspective, if you can uh, take time to communicate over and over and over and you spend time in prayer, we believe that God himself will grant you the wisdom and the strength and the know-how to resolve even the most complicated issue that you might be challenged with in your relationship. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to introduce you to something quite exciting that something we are working on. And so we're excited about it and we hope that you're excited about it as well. And then if you have any questions for us um, concerning us or marriage in general or relationships, please leave a question or drop a comment in the comment box. Please do that, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know what your thoughts are, your ideas, your suggestions, and any questions or concerns you might have. And we pray that the same joy and blessings that we've enjoyed in our home and in our marriage will be yours in your marriage, our relationship, and other relationships in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen to that. Now, if you know any of your friends who loves love, <laughs> who is in love, who thinks he or she is in love, or who is hoping to find love or hoping the love will find them please do us and them a favor send them this video and trust that it's going to be of great value to their lives all right we've enjoyed sharing with you